So let me just, we got like very few minutes left and I wanna go back to the central lobe of the biopsy. I give you a very clear cut case to sort of decide to proceed with lymph node uh, biopsy. But what happened if someone comes in 60, 50 years old, let's say, right? And uh, you got a melanoma 0 0.8, no ulceration. Um, and, uh, you know, um, let, let's just say it's not transected at the base. At that point, how do you talk to that patient? And with understanding, you know, if you sort of ribbon cut this entire first uh, biopsy, you probably will find certain area of the tumor to be greater than 0 0.8, right? Yeah, and how do yeah. you counsel that patient? Because that's the gray zone. You got six issues that I have to finish in six minutes. But um, <laughs> the first is that it used to be that shave biopsies were frowned upon. That's it, shave biopsies are just fine. You make the diagnosis, we'll treat it. Uh, in, in the absence of visible residual melanoma at the shave biopsy site, the, the amount, the number of people who are upstaged at the reexcision is less than 5%. So okay. the, the initial biopsy, you have to first decide is the initial biopsy representative or informative. That's the first decision. And most of the time it is. Yep. Um, from that, you, ha you have a starting point of what's the risk of a sentinel lymph node biopsy? And in this, uh, a positive sentinel node, which in this guy is about five or six, 7%, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and then you start to talk about, okay, you've got a 0.8 millimeter melanoma with no other risk factors. Your cure rate is 93% if I just take it out, okay? Um, if I take it out and you're in that 7% that has a positive sentinel node, your cure rate's about 88%. And if you're, if I take it out, your lymph node's negative, your cure rate's 97%. Do you want to have this procedure to take you from 93%, which is where you are now, either up to 97 or down to 88? Okay. It, it, I think a lot of it, Steve, and I, I, it, this, this is really important for me. Don't use adjectives when you describe these things. Use real numbers, okay? And I think, again, the patients will understand this. Some patients want me to make the decision, which I will. They want adjectives. But I think unless you really, really know the numbers, you know, uh, uh, a 7% risk of a positive sentinel node be, be, may be very low to somebody. It may be very high to somebody else. Um, now, this is so a... This is a great way of consulting patient, right? And yeah. because everyone is subjective and they bring their own sort of background and, and their own feelings. And, and so one person's uh, thinking about 7% is totally different from the other person's 7%. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. So try to be objective. And then at the end of the day, as you know, as you've heard from this interview today, I can talk for 45 minutes on anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The patient pretty soon their eyes glaze over and they say, what should I do? <laughs> and I will tell them what they should do. Um, because, because again, this, this sentinel node biopsy doesn't change anything. It just, it's just information. I, I use the analogy of a mm. cholesterol test. You yeah. go get a blood test for cholesterol. It doesn't prevent you having a heart attack. It just yeah. tells you what your risk is of having a heart attack. Yeah. And, and the only and, the only difference is that uh, one is a blood draw, the other one's a little bit more involved. But and we and we can lower your cholesterol, yep. whereas we can't really lower your risk. Yep. Uh, yep. And I, you know, that again is a statement that I was very comfortable about in the pre-immune therapy era, uh, that is subject to again debate and discussion in the post-immune therapy era because it's we probably can influence that risk a tiny little bit with immune therapy, particularly in the higher risk patients. No. Yeah, we never got a chance to get to talking about stage 2B, 2C, the adjuvant setting, everything stuff. We 